All right, dudes. Hello. So listen, I had this question a lot and specifically a lot lately. Maybe it's because I've kind of made a, a little bit of a break or I've taken a little bit of a break on my channel. But there's other dudes getting into skateboarding in their 50s, particularly one of you fellows from Australia is asking me, where did I start out at? And you know what? Being an older guy, we may not know. We can go back into the archives and search and find the older videos. But uh, either way, it gives me a good idea for a video to come back here and kind of show you guys where I started, do a little reaction video to three of my videos. Um, I consider the middle one a highlight and then the top one some of my better skating, uh, more aggressive skating anyway. Um, but to get this started, I have pulled up here Old Guy's Rule 46. You know, I thought I was a badass because I got back on the board, right, from being this old dad. Um, my kids got me going, got me started, and when I came out, it was all about them. It was just follow them on the GoPro and keep them safe around other skaters. And then one day, and it's not this video I pulled up, uh, but one day Killian at 5... He's effing around holding my GoPro, right? And, and for the first time, I get two axle stalls in a row. And I come out of the bowl after that, just shocked. And he's standing there holding the camera right at me. And I'm like, did you get that? And he's like, yeah, daddy, I got, I got it. And I'm like, hell no, he didn't get it. And if he did, it's shaky and I'm not in the center of the camera, whatever. Anyway, I got home downloaded the footage from the camera and noticed that he got it perfectly. So like I said, that clip's on the channel. Um, I can't find it except for a short and it looks kind of lame for the video. So this video was taken um, around that same time. I just barely got back on the board. At this point, I've been skating with my kids and doing this for maybe a couple of months. So I've already reestablished the drop in and then uh, a front side slash on the coping was the only thing that I ever had as a child. And they were like on makeshift quarter pipes, you know, nailed some crappy piece of plywood up against a, a telephone pole and a housing track that was being constructed and throw some sandbags behind it for support. So I could, I could like lap over a wheel on that. Um, so this is where I'm at right here in this video, and let's get started on it. Let's check it out. Did you guys see that right there? I have a weird style, and I think I learned it on those makeshift quarter pipes because they weren't very safe. There was no coping. A lot of times we didn't even have a deck. Most of the time we didn't even have a deck. We nailed it right up to a pole. And so I had this little stall where I would actually push my heel down on the surface of the ramp when I went up. And if you'll see me do it, I had a lot of guys, other old guys that were way better skaters than me be like, dude, how do you do it like that? Like they, I don't know if they seemed, they sounded interested to me, but they probably, it was probably a backhanded compliment. Like, whoa, it's kind of cool how you do that, dude, but you're fucking doing it wrong. Like, it was probably that. But yeah, pay attention to my uh, my backside little stall I do on the slash grind. See that? So that's all I had. I would try to come out front side. I might try to pop it and go back to tail and basically just do a drop in. That was not something I even had yet, but I was realizing that, yeah, maybe I could uh, progress a little. So this is at 46 years old and I'm not gonna watch this whole video, but I wanna show you some of it. It's getting a little crazy there. So around this time when I was skateboarding, other dudes, like I had a friend out there, Barry, who was a few years older than me, and he was just rediscovering skateboarding for himself as well. 
and he was more into carving. And I know there's some skateboarders, older guys that come out there and learn to skate. They're afraid to lift their trucks up. They don't want to do a kick turn. And I was only kick turns. And he would always say, like, don't you have any desire to learn how to skate the bull right? And, like, it never really registered that there was a different way to skate it as far as keeping your trucks down and carving the bowl and getting a lot of speed. It wasn't on my radar because I was single-minded about focusing on getting into a stall. That's all I wanted. I spent most of all my sessions out here, my hours, just dropping in, trying to go into a stall. And I don't even think at this point I'm doing that. So that footage I told you that my son got was probably months after this, but this is where I started. Now I'm gonna fast forward to another video uh, way later, and let's see if it, it tells me when I uploaded it. All right, so the first video I just pulled up that we watched, that was six years ago from now, and right now we are just in January of 2023, um, so that was six years ago. So I've been skating now at the point of doing this video in January 2023 for six years. That's where I started, and all I had was kind of a front side slash and a drop in. Um, didn't even know how to carve a bowl yet. I couldn't keep my wheels down, rolling around any corners, any any bowls at all. So now here we are at four years ago. So I'd been skating for two years and I had got the stall, I had gotten the backside grind, and now I'm trying to get the nerve to like put my trucks up on a 50-50 stall, but front side. So I'm facing away and I'm trying to get the nerve to drop back in. So let's watch a little of this. Sometimes we try to do some little things to help us out and they end up making things worse. So keep, keep in mind, this is four years ago. I totally don't recommend tying this rope. This rope wrapped around my finger. Whatever it's a, I'm doing here, I still feel the hang up. Yeah. Plus this tie strap was catching my finger. All right, let's go forward past that. Okay, so now I'm at May 15th, 2018. So it's a day after my birthday, 2018. So that's, this is four years ago. So the first part of that clip with the, with the, uh, with the strap uh, it might have been, oh yeah, you know what? It says right there, six months progress. So from the time of me holding the strap and trying to get the nerve to just drop in off the coping from an axle stall, six months later, this is what I'm doing. That's funny. So six months of progress from, from barely trying to get the nerve to do an axle drop in from a front side stall to that. I mean, that's hauling, but truth be told, doing that any other way but going smoking fast was more scary to me. It, it, it felt safer going faster, even though it was pretty gnarly. And I mean, I literally looked at it like as if I'm like a linebacker padded up and you know, somebody said, you get that guy this time, you get a million dollars, you know? Like I, I hit him hard, I went for it really hard and I progressed really fast, but I felt like going at it, like with my horns down like that, I felt like I had less of a chance of being hurt. And you know, maybe some of that's upbringing. My dad used to, used to tell me like back in a Pop Warner before I was in high school football, you know, he'd say, look, the guy who's going the fastest 
doesn't hurt as bad. <laughs> he also used to give me money for good stick marks on my helmet. So yeah, there's a little drain bramage involved possibly, but let's find the next clip. It says here I uploaded this, this, uh, this video 10 months ago. It's definitely older than that. Um, how old, I don't know. Um, what have I done since then? At this time, this level of skill for me, I was not able to roll in on anything over five feet or anything over four feet, I should say. When I'm rolling in here, it's at four feet. I've since this video, I've learned how to roll in to that other bowl on five feet high. I've even learned how to do front side grind slower, stand up grind, um, at five feet also. So I've learned more since this video, but I just pulled up this video because it's kind of fun. And I want you guys to check it out that, you know, this is, this is probably what, three years ago? Yeah, I would say this is probably three years ago. So this is probably three years of progress. Um, so yeah, let's check it out. Switches. I miss those days. You know, and the, and the reason I use the animal, the prey animal attacking is because that's honestly how I feel when I'm skateboarding out here. If I take it, like set my cup of coffee down or my tea and I, I end up getting hurt more. <laughs> if I look at it, like, mm, I'm going to fuck this up, right? Like if I look at it and I go into it with that attitude, I feel much safer and I can take crashes, I can take falls. So it's a real mental thing for me. It's superstitious, just the opposite of being like, oh my God, it's kind of moist out here and I'm gonna fall. You know, it's, it's, it's the opposite. I look at it like, get myself charged up, fired up and I'm gonna do it, you know? Um, I just feel safer that way. So I think that's a me thing. And I'm sure a lot of you guys think it's crazy and I'm sure a lot of you guys get motivated by it because it's like, it's firing me up to watch myself. I wanna, get out there right now and do it. But I'm, I've got like this whole pile of work I got to get to right behind me right now. So it hasn't been a great weekend because we've had a lot of early morning dew on the ground. I've already said moist, so I'm not going to say mist, sweat, or whatever, but it's super cold too. But anyway, let's get back into this. Uh, this video is not very long. Let's check it out. Got the 50-50 grinds. Got the front side slashers. So I had the front side slash at six feet. Got the front side grind now at eight feet. Um, that's the highest I've ever done a front side slash grind. Um, I've never done a front side carve grind that high. You know what? I have done the front side slash grind at nine feet in Brushy Creek on tile coping, but I've never done any kind of a straight up carve grind where the wheels stay down front side over six feet so far. So far. 
But that's something I can do. That's something I can get. Um, so yeah, let's watch some more. This is my favorite video I've ever done. I know how much balls that took me to get those front side grinds. I, it, it was scary. Yeah. I haven't ridden this bull in a couple of years now. I've been all about that red bull. Watch my ankle right here. If I was in like a, a high top, I would have been hurt. Dude, did you guys see this ankle? This angle this time went like that. Maybe it's a superstitious thing, but when I wear a high top, it like doesn't allow my ankle to like roll and flex as much as I want. I end up with way more injuries wearing high tops than I do not wearing high tops. And it's like, I can take an ankle hit like that and uh, it can be hurt. And it can almost just, I can almost just get it out of my mind just by controlling my thoughts about it. And it goes right away. It's it's crazy how solid my ankles actually are, especially skating at 230 pounds, like 50 overweight. Oh yeah, this gets me pumped, dude. It's amazing how music helps a video. So there we go. Um, like I said, I've learned more since then by getting into another bowl, a bigger bowl, one with square pockets, rounded corners, obviously, but square pockets, um, and skating more flat walls and being able to get the roll-ins there. Um, throughout this progress, you know, there was some street stuff, some slappy stuff, some ramp half pipe stuff. Um, you know, a lot of other things you learn. So if you're starting out now, get the good set of pads. Like, don't fuck around with that. When you buy knee pads, don't get the ones with the rivets. Get, like, the pro-level knee pads. You know, spend a little bit of money and get the good stuff. Um, I still wear the wrist guards. The, let's see, let me get it. I have a new set. I have a new set right here. The uh, the triple eight, they're called Hired Hands. Uh, the, the quality is not as good as they used to be back in the day, but um, these things, they save me. And, you know, I don't know why a lot of the OG, like rippers, the good skaters, the vert skaters, they don't wear wrist guards. And in vert, you probably don't need it as much because if you put your hand down at the top of the bowl, you're going to break everything anyway. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, they go to their elbows and they go to their knees and they slide it out. But you know what? When you're starting, just because you see the the big brothers doing that, you don't do it because you're skating slower. You're in the bottom of the bowl. Things are flatter. I mean, you can hurt your knees more on lower transition than you can on steeper transition. So be padded up. Protect yourself. You know, the, the, the slams on the back of your head, those are gnarly. And you don't know when it's coming. And it's come. I've slammed my head so many times. Over on my Instagram page, you can see a video where you know I literally got a hole, finger-sized hole, ripped into my elbow just because I didn't have elbow pads on that day. And I barely landed on my elbow. I slapped the ground, and it just tore the skin open somehow. So um, go for it. Get in the right mindset. Don't be a scaredy cat. You know, you got to try to – the skateboarding is all about overcoming your own mind. And overcoming that fear. If you ever get a day when you're going out there and you're just too chalked up with fear, just bounce, dude. It's not worth it. But think about your mindset. And, you know, think about if you struggle. Like, I struggle with a lot of fear. But, you know, I have a desire 
to do this, uh, not only to get better and to skate because it makes me feel like a better person. It makes me feel younger. Um, there's something to, you know, having aches and pains, you know, being an older guy. I mean, that's what youth felt like. It's just when you're older and you've started to live a more sedated existence, uh, it's new to you, you know, but get out there and get some bruises and get some cuts and, and, uh, do something badass and be a part of a badass culture, you know? Um, but wear pads and you can get there too. Boom. So there it is. All right, guys, take care. Love y'all next week. Skateboarding. I need to get out there <clears throat> and get back in and do some more of that growling, dude. Maybe I'll do a session at that bowl. This was really a big tease to me. So yeah. All right, man. Peace. The day prodigal son went full power. The day I was fearless. I need to change that. I'm not a zombie. Back from the grave. I'm a prodigal son. So I've returned home to skateboarding. The things that I loved, right? Um, a midlife crisis. Kind of is. You guys know if you follow my other channels. And I'm going to start linking all my other stuff below. Uh, the Bike Life channel, it's if you search YouTube, like at Old Bro Bike Life. If you want to watch my moto vlogs, which I'm going to start doing, I bought a chopper. It's a Japanese chopper. Not nearly as cool as those little bobber choppers, but dude, I don't turn a wrench. And I'm really blown away at how much these shysters charge at these shops to fix a motorcycle. I mean, even HD, dude, $500 for an oil change. I took my... R1 crotch rocket in this last weekend to a shop in Georgetown. I needed to get some rust cleaned out of the tank. I expected, you know, it might be a thousand, you know, I need a new front tire and, uh, check some of the fluids, which I already had the brakes done. Uh, you know, bled the whole line. The brakes are all serviced and, uh, and the oil changed new battery. I already have all that, right? $3,450. What the fuck? That's highway robbery. It pisses me off because now I need to go back and pick that bike up and figure out how to work on it myself. So if you're in Austin area and you know something about bikes and you can shoot me some contact information so that I could have like a new friend that, you know, you could maybe answer some questions for me or maybe even give me some help on something that I'm struggling with. I'm going to try to do it myself. I'm going to put it in the moto vlog. That's where my bike life content, you know, my 29 inch or my wheelie thing stuff's going to go. And I'll say that again too. If you guys aren't into that yet and you haven't checked out those big BMX bikes with the 29 inch tires, you honestly don't know what you're missing because when you look out in the morning and it's kind of wet, ride the bike. It's super, it's hella fun, but there's nothing more fun than showing off in public places, riding wheelies. I mean, everyone loves wheelies. <laughs> Take care guys. Later. I want to do a wheelie on that chopper. I just don't know if I have the torque. We'll see. I can clutch it up. Maybe. Yeah.